deep in the woods of California, a mountain lion stalks its prey. A white-tailed deer is grazing in the overgrowth. Stealth is key until the mountain lion is within range. Mountain lions will sneak up on their prey and then attack from behind or the side. They can run up to 80 kilometers per hour for a short distance and will jump on the animal's back, almost always getting the animal by the neck and taking it to the ground. If initially they haven't broken the neck, they will then go on to suffocate the animal. A brutal act, but a way of life for this impressive predator. The mountain lion, along with the lynx, ocelot and jaguar, are the big cats still roaming the North American continent today. This, however, was not always the case, as prehistoric America was home to a wide array of diverse big cat species, some well known, others less so. In this video, we will take a look at some of these species in further detail and hopefully shed light on some little known facts about the big cat lineage. So without further ado, Let's get started. We'll start off with a big cat that's kind of in between well known and obscure. Well for me anyway, as I wasn't aware of its existence just until a few years ago. During the last ice age, lions lived in Africa, Europe, Asia and North America giving them one of the largest ranges of any mammal. The lions that lived in North America were called American lions. This lion was the largest extinct cat to live in North America during the Pleistocene. For paleontologists, these lions are a source of debate. How they are related to other big cats is uncertain. Recent genetic testing suggests that American lions evolved from the Eurasian cave lions that crossed the Beringia land bridge into North America. The American lion was a fierce predator, standing over 1 meter tall at the shoulder and 2.5 meters in length. The American lion is slightly bigger than today's African lion. The average American lion was very strong and bulky, weighing over 200 kgs. Despite their weight, these big cats were very fast. They had long, slender legs that allowed them to reach speeds of 50 kilometers per hour. The speed and the bulk of these animals helped them catch the megafauna they shared the continent with. American lions hunted other Ice Age animals, including camelids, giant ground slots, bison, and even young mammoths. Scientists do not yet know if the American lion hunted by itself or in groups. Regardless, the American lion was very successful. Fossils have been found from Canada to as far south as Mexico. With this range, American lions likely made it to the Tularosa Basin in New Mexico, which is today home to the White Sands National Park. Before the sand dunes of the White Sands formed, many of the animals the American lion hunted lived along the freshwater shores of the now dried up lake Otero. Today, fossilized footprints of the American lion can be found left in the Alkali Flat, what remains of the ancient lake Otero. American lions roamed across North America for thousands of years. However, Around 10,000 years ago, they went extinct, alongside many other Ice Age animals. The exact reasons are unknown. Their demise may have been due to human actions, climate change, or both. Whatever the cause, the reign of the lions in North America ended with the Ice Age. What I find fascinating about the prehistoric American big cats is that a lot of these species coexisted on the continent at the same time. You could say that this is the case in places like Africa today, 
with lions, cheetahs and leopards. But these animals have carved out separate ecological niches for themselves, which in turn allows them to avoid direct competition with one another. This next big cat coexisted and most certainly would have been in conflict with the American lion as their prey and hunting methods would have been very similar. Possibly the most well-known prehistoric big cat, the Smilodon, also known as the saber-toothed tiger, stands out among the rest. Smilodon fatalis was the second largest extinct cat roaming North America, reaching around one meter tall at the shoulder and with a body length of approximately 1.8 meters, and then weighing between 150 and 250 kg. Its scientific name, Smilodon fatalis, means fate scalpel tooth, referring to the elongated blade-like upper canines that could reach 11 inches in length. The forearm bones of the saber-toothed cat were more robust than most other large cats, suggesting that they bore powerful muscles for grasping and restraining prey. It also had a shortened tail, much like the living bobcat. The first Smilodon fossils were discovered in the 1830s in Brazil and were named Smilodon Populator by Danish naturalist Peter Wilhelm Lund in 1842. The first Smilodon Fatalis fossils from North America were discovered from a cave in Texas and were named by American paleontologist Joseph Leedy in 1869. Thousands of Smilodon Fatalis fossils have been collected from the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, and thus is the California State Fossil. Though sometimes called the saber-toothed tiger, Smilodon is not directly related to tigers or other pantherine cats such as lions, leopards and jaguars. Smilodon was one of the last of the Macherodonts or Macherodontinae, an extinct branch of the cat family tree that evolved elongated saber-like upper canine teeth. The other major branch of cats called the felinae include all living cats that we see today. The ancestor of Smilodon evolved in Eurasia and entered North America approximately 5 million years ago. The oldest Smilodon is called Smilodon gracilis, which lived 2.5 million years ago and was smaller and less robust than Smilodon fatalis. After crossing the newly created land bridge of Panama roughly 2 million years ago, Smilodon evolved into two separate species, the North American Smilodon fatalis and the larger South American Smilodon populator. Both the North and South American species of Smilodon went extinct roughly 10,000 years ago. Fossils of Smilodon fatalis have been found as far north as Alberta, Canada, and as far south as parts of northwestern South America. Fossils also suggest that Smilodon occurred in both Atlantic and Pacific coasts. It has been previously suggested that Smilodon may have preferred open to mixed woodlands because they were rarely found in areas of open habitats such as grasslands. Smilodon was a carnivore and it hunted large mammals. Isotopic analysis of the bones of Smilodon suggest that they had a prey preference of ruminant grazers such as bison and camels, as well as forest-dwelling browsers such as deer and tapirs. It is theorized that they would have used their enlarged canines to pierce the necks of their prey, which would cause massive bleeding and suffocation. The anatomy of the saber-toothed cat suggests that it was an ambush predator and had a relatively good jumping ability. The bones in its throat suggest that it could communicate by roaring like modern big cats. There are also several Smilodon fossils 
that exhibit healed injuries which have led some paleontologists to suggest that they had some form of social structure that shared resources. These social groups could have been similar to African lion prides or perhaps monogamous pairs with offspring. As with the American lion, Smilodon went extinct around 10,000 BC for probably the same reasons as their cousins. Why the Smilodon and cave lion went extinct around 10,000 BC, whereas their relatives, mountain lions and the rest, survived, we may never know. One theory, which I would agree is the most probable, is the fate of these prey animals, the megafauna such as mammoths, ancient camels and ground slots, all succumbed to extinction. The prehistoric big cats could not adapt and would have subsequently died out along with their prey. This next cat did not survive to as recent as 10,000 BC, but its journey and ultimate fate is fascinating. Homotherium, also known as the scimitar toothed cat or scimitar cat, is an extinct genus of Machirodontinae saber toothed predator. Often termed scimitar toothed cats, they inhabited North America, South America, Eurasia, and Africa during the Pleistocene and Pleistocene epochs, existing for approximately four million years. It is closely related to Smilodon, coming from the same no extinct genus. The lineage of Homotherium is estimated to have diverged from that of Smilodon about 18 million years ago. It was thought that Homotherium had gone extinct relatively early, nearly 300,000 years ago, but amazingly, a rogue specimen of Homotherium was found in the North Sea of Europe, dated to be from around 28,000 years ago when the sea levels were lower. During this time, the UK was connected to Europe by a massive dry plain known as Doggerland. Homotherium would have come into contact with humans who would also have lived and hunted on these plains. I find this discovery especially fascinating as it sheds light on how little we know about the true range and longevity of these ancient animals. There has also been a discovery of a 1.8 million year old fossil in Venezuela indicating that scimitar toothed cats were able to invade South America along with Smilodon during the Great American Interchange, a very well-travelled animal. Homotherium reached 1.1 metres at the shoulder and weighed an estimated 190 kg and was therefore about the size of a male African lion. Compared to more familiar Macherodonts like Smilodon, Homotherium had relatively shorter upper canines, but these flat, serrated teeth were still longer than those of any living cat. Homotherium's incisors and lower canines formed a powerful puncturing and gripping device. The skull was longer than in Smilodon, and it possessed a well-developed sagittal crest, where muscles were attached to power the lower jaw. Its large canine teeth were crenulated and designed for slashing rather than purely stabbing. However, a 2018 study found that Homotherium possessed a bite adapted to clamp and hold while inflicting damage with its canines, similar to a lion's, due to the larger amounts of trabecular bone present in the skulls of the genus. This is unlike the canine shear bite of Smilodon, which it has been compared to. And this difference in killing bites provides evidence for distinct ecological adaptations. The large upper canines of Homotherium were likely hidden by the upper lips and gum tissues of the lower lips, jaw similar to extant cats, unlike the large upper canines of Smilodon. 
Homotherium also had an unusually large square nasal opening, similar to that of a cheetah, which may have allowed faster oxygen intake, which would have also facilitated the cooling of the brain. The visual cortex in Homotherium's brain was large and complex, also unlike that of the modern cheetah, implying that it relied heavily on vision during the hunt. Genomic analysis supports the hypothesis that Homotherium was social and well adapted to life as a pursuit predator. Genes revealing high genetic diversity indicate the genus was far more common than previously assumed due to the preservation bias of the fossil record. The study also revealed that this genus of Macherodont was most likely diurnal and would have mainly hunted in daylight. At the well-known Frishan Cave in Texas, the remains of almost 400 juvenile mammoths were discovered along with numerous homotherium skeletons of all ages, from elderly specimens to cubs. Based on this fossil site, homotherium was likely a social predator. It would have been specialised in hunting young mammoths and then dragging these kills into secluded caves to eat in relative peace. As we have seen, a lot of the North American big cats were large, powerful predators. With this last animal, I've gone for something a little bit different. Not all of these extinct animals hunted by using their brawn. Just like its modern day cousin, this predator used its speed. The American cheetah is a species of the extinct genus Myrosynonyx, endemic to North America during the Pleistocene epoch. The American cheetah was morphologically similar to modern cheetahs. These cats were originally known from just fragments of skeletons, but nearly complete skeletons have been recovered from Natural Trap Cave in northern Wyoming. It is true to say that the skeletons of the long-dead American cheetah and the African cheetah are very similar, but there are some key differences, and one of the most obvious is size. These were larger than a modern cheetah, and a similar size to a modern northern cougar. It typically weighed around 70 kg, with a head and body length of 170 centimeters tail length around 92 centimetres and shoulder height of 85 centimetres. Large specimens could have weighed more than 95 kg. The claws of the American cheetah could be fully retracted, which has led to the suggestion that this cat may not have been as specialised for fast running as the African feline that we know today. The forelimbs of the American cheetah are also sturdier than today's cheetah, and they were connected to bigger muscles. Greater strength in the upper body, an interesting arrangement of the bones on the lower hind limbs, and retractable claws suggest that this animal may have been able to climb trees, something that today's cheetah definitely cannot do. However, these differences aside, so much of the American cheetah's skeleton is similar to the modern cheetah that it is very reasonable to assume these animals had very similar lifestyles. So how was the American cheetah related to the African cheetah? You would assume that being so similar, the American cheetah and the living African cheetah would be very closely related, and it has been argued that the American cheetah could have crossed the Bering Land Bridge into Asia eventually arriving in Africa and spawning the cheetah that we know today. However, nature is never that simple, and it is much more likely that these similarities arose due to a process of convergent evolution, the phenomenon by which two unrelated species end up resembling one another because they adapt to similar circumstances. Being a predator which relied on its speed it most likely preyed on relatively fast-moving prey 
such as the pronghorn antelope. Fortunately for the pronghorn antelope, the American cheetah died out around 10,000 years ago. Its extinction coincides with the disappearance of many North American mammals. But what factors ultimately led to the demise of this feline are more of a mystery. Climate change was obviously a factor, and the loss of some of its prey species may also have been important. During prehistory, the diversity and copious amount of large predators that roamed not only North America is simply staggering. Here we have just covered some of the big cats, but there were many more species also coexisting at the time, which created a melting pot of conflict and in some cases, cooperation. Unfortunately, the events of 10,000 BC signaled the end of this era, but they have left a legacy that is studied by scientists and enthusiasts to this day. I hope that by watching this, you've learned something new about these animals, and I'll see you on the next one.